So in lateral area, we can see two bones in front sphenoid and behind temporal bone. Now two parts of the sphenoid are observed. One is the pterygoid process with medial and lateral pterygoid plates and greater wing of sphenoid infratemporal surface. Whereas in temporal bone, we can observe three parts. The inferior aspect of petrous temporal bone, the squamous temporal bone and tympanic plate. So three parts of the temporal bone and two parts of the sphenoid are observed in this area. Let me show you the same in separate bones. So this is sphenoid and you know now this uh, these two are lesser wings, these two are greater wings and over here inferiorly we can see this is the pterygoid process and to it the medial and lateral pterygoid plates are attached. So this portion is observed and second is this is greater wing of sphenoid infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid these two portions are observed let me show you the same in articulated skull just compare these two this portion and the pterygoid plates so these two portions of sphenoid are observed and three parts of the temporal bones are observed now, this is temporal bone and this portion is called as petrous part of the temporal bone this is the squamous part of the temporal bone and this triangular plate it is the tympanic plate so three parts of the temporal bone are observed the inferior surface of the petrous temporal bone the squamous part of the temporal bone and tympanic plate so these five bones are observed in the lateral area now let's see individually first is the tympanic process now th this is tympanic process now it is attached at the junction of body of sphenoid with the greater wing of sphenoid so superiorly it is attached to the junction of body of sphenoid and greater wing of sphenoid and below it is continuous as medial and lateral pterygoid plates you can clearly make out okay now what happens to these pterygoid plates the pterygoid plates are fused in front okay whereas behind they are separated and uh, there forms a v-shaped pterygoid fossa now uh, this fossa lodges pyramidal process of the palatine bone let me show you uh, this is maxilla with attached palatine bone and this is the pyramidal process of palatine bone so if we try to lodge this pyramidal process into the this gap between these two pterygoid plates like this so it will fix and now you can see from behind between the two pterygoid plates there lodges the pyramidal process of palatine bone so this is now the pterygoid fossa, the medial pterygoid, its deep head and tensor veli palatine muscle are found over here. Now as I mentioned anteriorly both the pterygoid plates are fused together and medially they are related to the perpendicular plate of palatine bone. This is perpendicular plate of palatine bone. Let me show you separately. Okay. This is palatine bone. It is fixed with the maxilla. Let me just try to move it. See, you can see moving palatine bone. So, this portion is horizontal plate, this portion is perpendicular plate. This is sphenoidal process, this is the orbital process, this is pyramidal process. So, this perpendicular plate of the palatine bone it is related to anteromedial aspect of fused pterygoid plates let me connect both again see this and together these two will take part in formation of lateral wall of the nose and nasopharynx okay will be over here now if you see anterolaterally you can see this is maxilla and this is the fused anterior aspect of 
both the pterygoid plates. So here forms a fissure between pterygoid plates and maxilla that is termed as pterygomaxillary fissure. So anteromedially the fused pterygoid plates are related to perpendicular plate of whereas anterolaterally they form a fissure that is pterygomaxillary fissure through which the infratemporal fossa is in connection with the pterygopalatine fossa. Let me show you the same in articulated skull. So these two are pterygoid plates and medially they are connected to the perpendicular plate of palatine bone. This is horizontal plate and somewhere over here will be the perpendicular plate. Now laterally you can see clearly this is maxilla and this is fused pterygoid plate. So there forms pterygomaxillary fissure. This is the territory of infratemporal fossa and deep inside will be pterygopalatine fossa. So that is regarding pterygoid process. Now let's see regarding the pterygoid plates. This is medial pterygoid plate, this is lateral pterygoid plate. Now you can clearly see medial pterygoid plate is running downward and backward whereas lateral pterygoid plate is running downward and laterally, downward, backward and laterally. Now if you see the medial pterygoid plate, it has got anterior border that is fused with the lateral pterygoid plate. It has got free posterior border, two surfaces, medial and lateral surface. Now if you see the posterior border, in uppermost part there is a pterygoid canal. Now we know about pterygoid canal, it leads to the pterygopalatine fossa over here in front. Now for detailed description of pterygopalatine fossa, please visit my another video. But uh, this is pterygoid canal and you know now to pterygoid canal or median now is passing through it. Just below that there is a pterygoid tubercle. Now, Below to that, throughout posterior border provides attachment to pharyngobasilar fascia. Okay. Now, in upper part there is a notch. You can see over here, and this notch is lodging the auditory tube. And the lowermost part of this posterior border forms a bony spicule that is called as pterygoid hemulus, which lodges tendon of the tensor villi valetini muscle. And the tip of the pterygoid hemulus, it is providing attachment to superior constrictor muscle and pterygomandibular raphe. In the upper part of the medial pterygoid plate, along its posterior border, there forms a depression, you can see over here, and that is scaphoid fossa, over here you can see. Now this will provide attachment to the tensor villi palatini muscle. The medial surface forms lateral boundary of nose and nasopharynx whereas the lateral surface it provides attachment to deep head of the medial pterygoid muscle along with the pterygoid fossa. So uh, that is about medial pterygoid plate. Now let's see lateral pterygoid plate. This lateral pterygoid plate again it has got two borders anterior and posterior two surfaces lateral and medial surface. So the medial surface it provides attachment to the deep head of the medial pterygoid muscle whereas the lateral surface provides attachment to lower head of lateral pterygoid muscle. So lateral pterygoid plate it is providing attachment to lateral pterygoid laterally and medial pterygoid medially. Now this lateral surface forms the medial boundary of infratemporal fossa. Let me show you. And for detailed description of infratemporal fossa, please watch my separate video. So this is lateral pterygoid plate, this is its lateral surface and this is the territory of infratemporal fossa if we join mandible over here. So this will be the medial boundary of infratemporal fossa and that itself is also providing attachment to the lower head of lateral pterygoid muscle. Now the same thing for the medial pterygoid plate, this is medial surface and over here this is the pharyngeal tubercle. So this is the territory of the nasopharynx. So that medial surface also forms lateral wall of the nasopharynx. Whereas the lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate forms the medial wall of the infratemporal fossa. Now the posterior border of the lateral pterygoid plate, 
sometimes it may show a spinous projection over here you can clearly see this is the pterygo spinous process and it is directed towards spine of sphenoid and together these two are providing attachment to pterygo spinous ligament this is spinous sphenoid okay and this is the pterygo spinous process so these two are providing attachment to pterygo spinous ligament so that is about lateral pterygoid plate now let's see second part of the sphenoid that is infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid now this is entirely greater wing of sphenoid and this portion which is forming roof of the infratemporal fossa it is included over here and that is called as infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid the same thing let me show you in articulated skull say this this is what we have discussed and now we are concerned with this portion of the greater ring of sphenoid infratemporal surface of greater ring of sphenoid if you if you see skull like this from laterally this portion forms the roof of infratemporal fossa so this is infratemporal surface of greater ring of sphenoid and if you see it closely by and large it is of pentagonal in shape so it has got five orders namely anterior border anterolateral border posterolateral border posteromedial border and anteromedial border now this anteromedial border is in relation to the pterygoid process that we have discussed the anterior border along with the maxilla this forms inferior orbital fissure let me show you so if you see it from orbit you can see that forms inferior orbital fissure so that is about anterior border of the greater wing of sphenoid anterolateral border forms infratemporal crest and that is the limit of the roof beyond that there is a gap in the roof so here forms the infratemporal crest at the anterolateral border of greater wing of sphenoid the posterolateral border is connected to the squamous temporal bone and posteromedial border is related to the petrous temporal bone so there are five orders of the infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid let me show you the same in separate bones this is sphenoid these two are lesser wings these two are greater wings so right now we are concerned with greater wing of sphenoid okay so uh, this is the superior view so this portion will form the middle cranial fossa and this portion will form the temporal fossa and this portion this is infratemporal surface so this portion is the infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid with five borders anterior border anterolateral border posterolateral border posteromedial border and anteromedial border so anteromedial border shows the pterygoid process the anterior border with the maxilla let me connect maxilla So now the maxilla is connected, the palatine bone is also connected along with. So if you see this, this is anteromedial border, this is anterior border and along with the maxilla it forms the inferior orbital fissure that you can see over here. The infra, in, the anterolateral border that forms the infratemporal crest. Now here this is posterolateral border, here comes the squamous temporal bone. Now let me show you. This is temporal bone and this portion is the squamous part of the temporal bone. This is tympanic plate and this is petrous part of the temporal bone. So this portion is related to the posterolateral border of the greater wing of sphenoid. Now let me connect both. So here it is connected. This is squamous temporal bone. So it is connected to the posterolateral border and this is petrous temporal bone so it is related to the posteromedial border. Now let's see the posteromedial border. The posteromedial border has got certain foramina and the first one is very large oval shape and this is foramen oval just because 
the shape is oval the name is given is forearm and oval and it opens inside the middle cranial fossa and that allows passage of four structures and you can remember a mnemonic that is M A L E M stands for the mandibular nerve A stands for accessory meningeal artery that is a branch of the maxillary artery L stands for lesser petrosal nerve and E stands for the emissary vein which connects the pterygoid venous plexus below to the cavernous sinus above. So four structures are passing through this foramen oval and posterolateral to that foramen oval there is another foramen. The walls of this foramen are having bony spines. So as the name given to it is foramen spinosum. Let me show you in another bone it shows very clear view of it this is foramen oval and this is foramen spinosum okay just in front of spinosphenoid see this this is spinosphenoid so just in front of spinosphenoid you will get foramen spinosum now three structures generally they will pass through it it will again open into the middle cranial fossa so three structures will pass through it and you can remember a mnemonic that is 3M, M, M and M. So first M stands for the middle meningeal artery. Second M stands for the meningeal branch of mandibular nerve that is nervous spinosus. Third M stands for the posterior division of the middle meningeal vein. Now another foramina in the posteromedial border. This is the foramen which is found between foramen oval and scaphoid fossa. This is scaphoid fossa. So in between these two, this foramen is sometimes present, not always found in all the bones, but whenever it is present, it is called as emissary sphenoidal foramen, or it is also called as foramen of Vesalius. So below it is opening between foramen oval and scaphoid fossa, whereas inside it opens between foramen oval and foramen rotundum. This is foramen rotundum which is again found within greater ring of sphenoid in the middle cranial fossa. So inside the emissary sphenoidal foramen or foramen of Vesalius it opens between foramen oval and foramen rotundum. Over here you can see the opening. And whenever it is present it allows passage of emissary vein. Now sometimes another foramen is found between, fora, between foramen spinosum and foramen oval. It is not present over here but whenever it is present it is called as canaliculus innominatus. A very small foramen between foramen oval and foramen spinosum. The laser petrosal now generally it passes through foramen oval but whenever there is presence of canaliculus innominatus it allows passage of laser petrosal now through it. So yeah, that is about the foramina found along the posteromedial border. Now at the junction of posterolateral and posteromedial border there forms a bony spicule that is termed as spinosphenoid. Let me show you an articulated skull. So this is posteromedial border this is posterolateral border and at their junction behind foramen spinosum there is formation of a bony spicule and that is termed as spinosphenoid. Now one ligament we have discussed that is pterygospinous ligament between the pterygoid process and the spine of sphenoid. In addition to that this spinosphenoid Laterally it is related to the auriculotemporal nerve and medially it is related to corda tympani and auditory tube. And in addition to it this spinosphenoid it also providing attachment to sphenomandibular ligament. Now this sphenomandibular ligament extends from spinosphenoid to the lingula of mandible which is situated just next to the mandibular foramen. Let me show you the lingula. Here you can see this is mandibular foramen and this is lingula. 
so here there is attachment lower attachment of sphenomandibular mandibular ligament in addition to it the anterior part of spinospinoid also provides attachment to most posterior fibers of tensor veli palatini muscle so that is about spinospinoid now between posteromedial border and the petrous temporal bone there forms a groove over here you can see this is called as sulcus tube now this lodges cartilaginous part of the auditory tube and if you trace it posteriorly this will lead to the bony part of the auditory tube that opens into middle ear now over here the sulcus tube uh, as i mentioned it lodges the cartilaginous part now that will lodge in the sulcus or the notch in the upper part of the medial pterygoid plate and over here this is the territory of the nasopharynx so you know the pharyngeal ostium of the auditory tube will be somewhere over here so this is the portion where the auditory tube lies now in the temporal bone as we have discussed there are three parts of the temporal bone are observed the inferior surface of the petrous temporal bone the squamous temporal bone and tympanic plate so uh, let's see first the inferior surface of the petrous temporal bone this is a triangular part and if you see it in a separate bone you can see this is petrous temporal bone this one and its inferior surface this portion this portion is observed in the norma basalis so the same thing you can see over here this portion now it is a triangular in shape so uh, here is the apex and apex is related to the foramen lacerum it is also related to the pterygoid processes to the greater wing of sphenoid to the body of sphenoid and entire petrous temporal bone is wedged between the basi occiput and greater wing of sphenoid now its inferior surface this portion provides origin to the levator veli palatini muscle and posteriorly it is related to the carotid canal now this carotid canal will open near the apex of the petrous temporal bone let me show you from inside this is foramen lacerum and here will be the opening of the carotid canal let me show you the same in the separate bone so uh, this is the infratemporal surface okay this is infratemporal surface and this portion will provide attachment to the levator veli palatini and posteriorly it is pierced by carotid canal which will open near the apex over here you can see this is the opening of the carotid canal near the apex of the petrous temporal bone in the foramen lacerum so if you connect both like this so here there is formation of foramen lacerum between body of sphenoid between pterygoid processes and apex of the petrous temporal bone it is generally 1 cm wide uh, gap in living it is filled by cartilage and the margins are lacerated so as the name given to it is foramen lacerum generally no important structure pass through it okay except the meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and emissary vein and in upper part the internal carotid artery traverses through it along with the venous and neuros plexus and then the internal carotid artery will enter in the cavernous sinus here lies the cavernous sinus so one more important thing found in the upper part of the foramen lacerum is the formation of nerve to pterygoid canal or vedians now you know it is formed by fusion of greater petrosal nerve which is coming from over here and deep petrosal nerve together they form vedians nerve so in front of foramen lacerum over here we'll get the pterygoid canal which will lead to the pterygopalatine fossa so let me show you the same in separate bone so uh, this is the pterygoid canal and if we join both the bones together here there is formation of foramen lacerum and the nerve will pass through it to enter in the pterygoid pterygopalatine fossa so this is regarding the inferior surface of petrous temporal bone now the tympanic plate is a triangular bony plate that is found lodge between the squamous temporal in front and petrous temporal behind so this you can see this is tympanic plate
it has got a medial end which is pointed and which is related to the spine of spinoid it has got a lateral free margin that is forming boundary part of the boundary of external acoustic meatus it has got anterior surface which is forming posterior half of the mandibular fossa over here you can see and it has got posterior surface which forms the anterior wall floor and lower part of the posterior wall of external acoustic meatus bony part of external acoustic meatus now it has got an upper border which is related to the squamous temporal bone and it is also related to a bony plate which is coming from the petrous part of the temporal bone the bony plate is called as tegment tympani and that turns down and that lodges between the gap of tympanic plate and the squamous temporal bone so initially the gap between the squamous temporal bone and tympanic plate it is called as squamo tympanic fissure now when the bony plate of tegment tympani which belongs to the petrous temporal bone this is petrous temporal bone and it sends a bony plate down between this squamo tympanic fissure so here you can see this is a bony plate and that divides the initial squamo tympanic fissure into two fissures anteriorly oriented petro squamous fissure because it belongs to the petrous temporal bone so anteriorly there forms petro squamous fissure and posteriorly it forms petro tympanic fissure again i am repeating initially there is formation of squamo tympanic fissure by downward descent of a plate from tegment tympani which is a part of petrous temporal bone the squamo tympanic fissure is divided into petro squamous fissure in front and petro tympanic fissure behind the medial most part of the petro tympanic fissure will allow passage of three structures namely corda tympani anterior ligament of malleus and anterior tympanic artery the posterior border is free it is sharp and medial it is related to the carotid canal you can see over here and it forms anterolateral boundary of carotid canal and laterally it forms anterolateral sheath of this styloid process this is styloid process so the same thing we can see in the articulated skull this is a triangular bony plate tympanic plate this is its lateral end here will be its medial end which is related to the spine of sphenoid this is lower free sharp margin it is related to the carotid canal and the styloid process the upper border is related to the squamous temporal bone and together they form initially squamo tympanic fissure which will then converted into petro squamous and petro tympanic fissure by a plate of tegment tympani over here you can see this portion is tegment tympani this is anterior surface forms posterior part of the mandibular fossa and the posterior surface will form anterior wall floor and lower part of the posterior wall of external acoustic meatus so this is about the tympanic plate the squamous part of the temporal bone over here posteriorly it forms anterior half of the mandibular fossa the posterior half is contributed by anterior surface of the tympanic plate so there forms entirely the mandibular fossa where the head of the mandible lodges to form jaw joint so this is the anterior half of the mandibular fossa next to it here this is the articular tubercle which is continuous with the anterior root of the zygoma and next to it this portion of the squamous temporal bone it is forming part of the roof of infratemporal fossa this entirely is the roof of infratemporal fossa 
So this portion is contributed by the squamous temporal bone.